Peace everyone, how are you? It's Natia Sissia and I am doing a live stream today talking about planned pregnancy versus planned infertility. So I hope you're watching my videos. I hope you're subscribed to my channel. I hope you are subscribed to my newsletter where I give you a free seven day introduction onto about how to increase your fertility naturally. And as part of my masterclass that I'm working on right now. So I hope you at least get part of that so you can kind of get a little intro into what, what to look forward to or how to increase your fertility naturally, of course. All right, so yesterday I talked about not getting new information and how that can affect your fertility. So today we're talking about planning for pregnancy versus planning for infertility because a lot of times people think that they're planning their pregnancy, but they're really planning for the complete opposite. You may think that planning for pregnancy is everything that you've been told that it is right when in reality is really a co-opted psyops to really ensure that you do not conceive it's really population control it sounds pretty it sounds cute planned pregnancy but when you really think about it who's planning your pregnancy for you right how when did you really sit down and plan your pregnancy and say okay i'm gonna get pregnant on this day with this person i'm gonna have this gender of a baby um on this day you know the due date's gonna be such and such this child is gonna be born and come into the world in this particular way right at this hospital this home birth whatever the case may be with this doctor this nurse these people are all going to be present the weather is going to be like this you get me so it's like this whole idea of having a planned pregnancy right it's a very western mindset and it's also an infertile mindset and I say infertile mindset because even though the words pregnancy are used in, you know, in the concept, when you are talking about planning a pregnancy, there is, that's a lot of, a lot of, what, what can I say, ego involved in that, right? There's a lot of ego involved in that. And to think that you can plan out a pregnancy and everything is going to go the way that you say it's going to go or you think you say it's going to go or whatever the case may be write it down whatever to think that you're everything's going to go that the way you say it right is to say that you know that you really know exactly what's going to happen in your life and you really know how things are going to operate and that is why a lot of times when people are faced with infertility their ego is so crushed their soul is so crushed because they really thought that they knew it all they really thought they had it all together they really thought that they were in control beyond human like beyond even just common sense beyond nature like beyond anything that makes sense right and to think that you are going to be able to plan your pregnancy and nothing is going to come that is going to challenge your concept of planning a pregnancy that's going to challenge your concept of fertility to think that you're going to be able to plan everything right and things just go smoothly and you're not going to have to deal with any type of struggle or challenges or anything you know it's very egocentric right very western mindset orientated and when i say it's an infertile mindset again it's because you're not factoring in all the abundance of possibilities that can take place right in nature to say that you're going to plan for your pregnancy means that for one that you've even included all the possible positive outcomes when a lot of times we don't know all the positives that can happen and it's also to say that you could you've planned for all the negatives that could possibly happen when you don't know all the so-called negatives that can happen right but when i, I want to emphasize the whole positive part because you know when you're talking about planning for a pregnancy a lot of times we're not even given all of the positive um practices actions rituals we're not really presented with all of the positive things that could happen within our fertility journey right so to say that you're planning for your pregnancy it really shows um a lack of what can i say wisdom it shows a lack of but that's not the real word i'm looking for a lack of humility right because there are so many things that are, are done in different cultures to boost fertility increase fertility and to ensure um, a healthy happy pregnancy that when you talk about your planning for a pregnancy in the west and the way that it's presented it presented to us in the west and how we should be planning for a pregnancy right it doesn't factor in all the balanced type harmonious holistic practices that are out there the rituals the ceremonies the birth the rites of passages that exist in this world to say that you're planning a pregnancy is to say that you got it all together 
right? And again, uh, this concept is presented to us by either white women, in most cases, or white men. And they're not presenting us with these concepts, right? So a lot of times when you plan your pregnancy and you experience some challenges or some infertility along the way, who do you turn to, right? And who can you blame? They're not going to take accountability. Oh, we're sorry. We didn't know that, you know, you were going to have fibroids. We didn't know that, you know. No, because they didn't tell you that you need to eat healthy. They're not telling you that you need to, you know, do certain things. You need to have a healthy mind state and so forth. They're just like, you know, plan your pregnancy. Don't don't get pregnant for um, Andre down the street. Make sure that you have an abortion, you know, until you graduate school. Have all the sex you want, but make sure that you use this condom and pop this IUD and these pills, right? That's what, what planned pregnancy means in the West. It means planned infertility, okay? Planned pregnancy in the West means planned infertility. If you are talking about planned pregnancy in some other culture, or country, or hemisphere, you are probably really talking about a pregnancy because Planned pregnancy in another country is planned marriages, it's um, planned rituals, right? And it's planned rites of passages, where they are ensuring that you have a family structure, ensuring that you have um, support, right? Family support, uh, birth support, fertility support, community support. You know, they're ensuring that you are going to be able to take care of yourself, to feed this child, and, you know, that there's going to be some type of community for you. But here in the in the West, planned fertility, planned uh, pregnancy means planned infertility because they're going to make sure that the only support that you get is this um, support on how to use these birth control pills, right? How to use this um, these birth control, other mechanisms, the sponge, the IUD, right? How to... No, book your appointment for an abortion, right? That is what planned pregnancy means here. And that really translates into planned infertility because when you're thinking that you're planning your pregnancy in the West, right, what you're really doing is you're putting off pregnancy. You're saying, I'm going to go to school, get my job, get, or sorry, get my good education, then I'm going to get a good job, then I'm going to buy a nice house, Right. Make sure that there is a nursery in that house. Right. Because, you know, you're planning your pregnancy. So you're going to make sure there's a nursery in the house. You're hey, might want to plan for a spouse, too. So you're going to look for Mr. Right. And you're not going to settle for less, even if you're 40 and still can't find a man. And you definitely are not looking for a black man because he doesn't fit the criteria. You know, when he fills out the resume, you know, he falls short. So now you're 40. No man. But you got your education. You got your career, your job. You got the nice house with the nursery. You got the car with, you know, you got the car seat in the box. You got the clothes in the box. But you ain't got no baby. You ain't got no bun in the oven, right? You ain't got no man, no man to create this baby with, no family. But you got a plan. You got planned pregnancy, though. Because your nurse and your doctor, they're helping you, right? They're helping you. They're helping you to plan for this pregnancy, that's probably never going to come because now you're 40, now you're 35. And, and, you know, really, realistically, now with all the pollution, with all the junk food that sisters are eating and the, the mindset just not being on fertility for their entire life. Now, sisters as young as even 28 are experiencing infertility. And let's be real. Some of you sisters are planning fertility, uh, planning, planning pregnancy at this so-called young age, because this is what's being pushed on you through school. So, you know, you move right into the clinic and at this young age, they're like, okay, well, plan your pregnancy. So some of you, and some of you have gotten a good jobs, a good, you know, um, careers and house and car at a young age. So, and you got the, you know, you're planning. So even at 28, you could have everything lined up saying, you know, I'm going to have this baby and so forth. I'm going to plan my, my pregnancy. But even at this young age, you finding that you are so-called infertile. You got PCOS. You know what I mean, sisters? I see and I meet young, very young, right? Talking about they got PCOS. Cannot have a baby. Infertile. So-called infertile. Right? So even at this so-called young age of planning for your pregnancy, you're infertile. Why is it in school they did not tell us anything? There was no such thing as planned healthy womb. Why didn't we just have that? Like, I, we could have been just fine with that. Why wasn't there just planned knowing when you ovulate? Why, why wasn't there just planned knowing what administration really is? Right? But you got planned pregnancy. Why such an emphasis on planned pregnancy? Right? But no emphasis on keeping the womb free and obstructed from any type of blockages, any type of damage. 
they're not telling you about the damage that these pills cause on your your womb and your ovaries the harm that can come from having abortions repeated abortions the harm from a lot of these birth control mechanisms and when they do tell you it's in very fine print and they're not really you're not really a lot of you not taking the time to read these things you just want to know that you just want to have all the sex you want and you don't want to get pregnant don't want to have the baby by the way go and check out the video that i made i check out the video when i do post it on wanting sex and not a baby but i'll say all this to say is that a lot of times when we talk about planned pregnancy in the west it is really planned infertility because by the time you are ready for a pregnancy or you think you're ready for a pregnancy you've probably already been on birth control pills for maybe five to ten years and then you, you come off the pill and you're like okay well where's my real period because you've been on a fake superficial artificial simulated period right being on the birth control pills so you're wondering where's your real period you're, you may be testing for your ovulation using these ovulation kits and so forth and it's just all over the place, right? No real ovulation going on. Then if you do get your period, right, it's probably either too short or, you know, very long, right? And again, by that time, some of you may be having fibroids, endometriosis, cysts, plops, and all these things, you know, growing inside of your womb and your ovaries and so forth, right? So when you're planning for a pregnancy, are you really factoring all of that in? Are you factoring how your so-called planned pregnancy is really amounting to planned infertility? And this is what I'm talking about with the whole mindset concept. If you don't get your mindset wrong, if you're doing things and saying that you want A, B, C, D, and E, but everything that you're doing really, you know, doesn't amount to that, you're really doing the opposite. You say you want a baby, but you're smoking, drinking, you know, doing unhealthy things. If you, you know, how is that going to equate to a pregnancy, right? So a lot of times this whole planned pregnancy thing is just the opposite. Another thing that you can be doing if you're planning for your pregnancy is really planning for failure. Because if you say you're planning for your pregnancy, but again, you're doing things that are just completely opposite. You could be planning for failure and this failure can be very debilitating it could be very stressful right and it could literally get you off your track if you really wanted to have a baby it could really stop you in your tracks and you could really be thinking okay well the doctor said i'm infertile because i've been smoking all these years and you know i can't have a baby or you know the doctor said that i need to have a hysterectomy because i have all these fibroids and, you know, so I guess there goes my dream for increasing my fertility or having a baby because now I got to get these fibroids. They're not telling you that, you know, you can heal fibroids. They're not telling you that you need to heal all these things that, you know, you've been doing to damage yourself. They're just telling you, oh, we're sorry, you you know, you've been planning for your pregnancy by taking all these abortions and all these pills and using all these birth control pills. But, you know, now we just got to cut your womb out. Right? So a lot of times when you're planning for pregnancy, you could be planning for failure. And on the opposite end. When you're planning for pregnancy, you could be planning for all the wrong reasons, right? So you could be planning for pregnancy thinking that, you know, you're going to have this perfect baby. Thinking that, you know, you are going to have this baby in this very certain way. And when the baby comes, or, you know, and even before the baby comes, your whole idea about what you thought fertility was and pregnancy was can just really be shifted in you know in the midst of you trying to get pregnant you realize oh you can't get pregnant every single day of the month except for when you're on your period some sisters really believe that right and you realize so it's like if you're planning for all the wrong reasons and you come across those um wake up calls sort of say how can you really plan beyond that? Like that should shake you up to make you know there's a lot I don't know. It should make you say there's a lot I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be so-called planning or following this concept of planned pregnancy. And another thing what, where you could be planning for all the wrong reasons is that, you know, again, you're planning to have a baby by a certain age because you've been told to. You've been told to wait until you got the house, the car. So that's another way that you could be planning for all the wrong reasons. You're planning for materialistic reasons. You're planning for fertility or pregnancy based on how much money you, you have. And I, I, I say this a lot to myself, and I don't hear nobody else say, but a lot of times people use the excuse for having an abortion by saying that, you know what, either they're too young, don't have a job, or the partner that the man doesn't have a job, don't have a house, or the man doesn't have a job, don't have a car, or the man doesn't have a car, right? And 
there's a lot that can happen in nine months. <laughs> so to say that at that very moment in time that you don't have these things, therefore you should not be a parent or, you know, you should halt your obvious fertility that has manifested into a pregnancy and a baby. There's a lot that can happen in nine months. And then on the flip side, for those people who portray themselves as having it all, right? Equally for them, you could have your house, your car, your education, the man, the nursery, the baby clothes, everything you need, everything going right. But within a space of nine months, you could lose it all. So that's also not a reason to abort a child or so forth, right? And I don't want to get too far off into abortion, but I just want to make the point that you could be planning for all the wrong reasons, right? So I definitely want to point that out. And there's probably one more point that I wanted to make, which would be planning for perfection, so it's, they kind of all are kind of along the same lines, but planning for perfection is kind of emphasizing that you really, really think that you got it all and your ego is really boosted up because now you are, you're not just planning for your pregnancy, but you are also planning for the life that this child is going to live, thinking that you are going to be able to somehow project your expectations for this child and how this child is going to grow up, live, respond, act, behave, right? You could be planning for perfection by saying that you know when this baby comes this baby is only going to cry when i <laughs> tell this baby it's okay to cry this baby is going to behave when when the baby you know this child is going to marry who i say this child is going to marry and this child is going to you know to behave you know in a certain way all throughout you know school or you know their teenage years and so forth not realizing there is a calling for that particular child you know that comes through your womb that you may not have control over right you may not be able to control the child's behavior and I'm, I'm serious some people go as far as to try to time um not just time intercourse for fertility but time intercourse for what uh, uh sun sign moon sign and so forth that this child is going to be born under so that way they can kind of predict how this child is going to behave respond act and you know, ultimately have control over this child. And I want to say that's kind of like you're planning for perfection in a very anal type of way that can, you know, really be working against you if you are really just trying to plan for fertility. You know, if you're really just trying to have some, be fertile, increase your fertility. A lot of you, your fertility is this small and your, your ego is like huge, you know, trying to control the lives of future ancestors that are here to come to really correct things. A lot of times they're here to, they're coming back to correct things that, you know, either we had made wrong our ancestors or even, you know, other people on this planet, you know, have really just caused to go in, uh, you know, just weird, <laughs> weird type of ways. And they're coming back here to correct it. They call them star seeds and all this stuff, right? But if you're not factoring all that in and then, you know, this child comes, you know, it could really blow your ego, you know, even for future pregnancies and future fertility. So I just basically want you to get your mind right and to have, you know, a better mindset, have a more fer fertile mindset. And a fertile mindset is open to all the possibilities that could possibly exist as far as bringing another life into this world, as far as planning for fertility and so forth. You're not planning for fertility by... uh taking drugs and medications right that are going to possibly harm even the baby that you're taking because that's what's happening a lot of time people are taking colmid not knowing that colmid can help to decrease your fertility and your child's fertility in other ways right not knowing that some of these drugs these things that are you know stimulating your womb and so forth to, uh, to release ovaries your eggs your ovaries to release eggs and so forth are can be very damaging can have the opposite effect right so Make sure that when you are planning for your pregnancy, as you say, that is really truly that and not, you know, planning to line the pockets of these doctors and, you know, do things that really go against your body's natural desire to want to conceive your body's natural fertility capacities, right? Because we can do that sometimes in our own mind, man can be destined to corruption, right? So... That's the pretty much the point that I wanted to make here is that there is definitely a difference between planned pregnancy and true um, fertility because a lot of times so-called planned pregnancy is it really if you were to look at it from a distance it really is planned infertility a lot of the things that people are doing on their so-called journey and again it is a Western mindset it is an infertile mindset and it's not a mindset that we are born with it's not a mindset that we 
arise to our own. A lot of times this mindset was given to us through school and whatever, um, billboards, posters, commercials. So just tap back into your own mindset because a lot of you, you're already fertile, right? You just basically got to get back into your fertile mind. You got to get out of your own way. You got to get these other people out of your way, right? Stop accepting all the, you know, the crap, all the, the leftovers, you know, the population control tactics and mechanism that is just being thrown on you. And, you know, we're just being told, you know, get a good job, education, um, support the matrix, support the matrix, support the, the government, support the community. That's really all it translates into support the matrix, right? Not you, right? Because we have a mind of our own. We, you know, we, we don't necessarily, if you didn't want to have a baby for a certain person, you wouldn't need some white man or some white woman to come in and tell you, oh, you know what, you can have this abortion. Like really and honestly and truly, people would figure out this stuff on their own. But when they make it too accessible and when they at the same time throw in your foot in your face, um, have more sex, do this, you know, be hypersexualized and so forth, it really creates the perfect, the perfect uh, storm for population control and so forth and decreased fertility right and um broken families and broken hearts so anyways this is my video planned pregnancy versus planned infertility i hope you like it i hope you look out for more videos make sure that you join my workshop where i will be going in more on this topic and basically trying to help you sort out where you may be planning for infertility under the guise of planned pregnancy my workshop will be on july 14th the link is in my bio or you can definitely go to eventbrite and look me up at black fertility on there um so make you make sure you subscribe for that and i look forward to talking to you again peace